Hello, this is Dr. Michael Hassan, the engineering doctor, and this is lecture, ten, lecture number 10, Count of Maps, section 2, for chapter 3, Combinational Networks, the course Digital Logic Design, Digital Systems, or Digital Electronics. This is a disclaimer for you to read. There are many references in Digital Logic Design. I cite three of them here. The chapter content we started with combinational networks, then we talked about count of maps, two variable k maps, three variable k map, four variable k map, five variable and six variable k maps. Today we'll talk about incompletely specified functions, complement of a function, and canonical and standard forms from the map, and two level implementations. Incompletely specified functions. Incompletely specified functions, they are functions basically with do not care. For certain input combinations, the function output will never take place. So we don't care about the value of the output. So the value of the output could be assigned to zero or be assigned to one. We call it a don't care condition. Hence, in minimizing functions with kmap, one can combine as needed a larger set of cells that otherwise be possible without including cares. That is, we choose the don't cares that minimize the function further and we ignore the ones they do not. In other words, we take the don't care or leave them depending on whether they do or they do not minimize the function further. An X denotes the values of the function for the care combinations on them. As an example, we have a function here given as the sum of the midterm 0, 2, 8, 9, 11, a plus d, which is do not care conditions at 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, 14. We follow up the map immediately based on this and with do not care. In A, I did not use any don't care. And in B, I use don't care to simplify the map further, to simplify the function or to minimize the function further. In A, without using the don't care, we found f to be b prime, d prime, or a b prime, c prime. As you can see here, those two four cells represent a set of four because they are logically adjacent. And those two cells, I have one cell here as one, so combined with this one, give me a group of two, and this group of two will give me A, B prime, C prime. As you can see, A is one, B is zero, so this is A, B prime, central side, and I have the zero will cancel with for the D, so I have C prime, so it is A, B prime, C prime. And this is the second term function. However, if I allow myself to use don't cares, I can set, take a group of eight, those do not care here, this one, this one, this one, group of eight, and this one, this one, with this one, this don't care, will be a group of four. So the group of eight will be deep line because everything will cancel horizontal axis, so I get one, and the zero will cancel with one for the C, so I get only d prime, d prime and minus d prime. Or I have everything. Everything will be cancelled vertical axis, and I will have only a b prime, a b prime, as you can see it here. So f, the minimize function, utilizing don't cares, b prime or a b prime. How we find the complement of a function? The complement of function, if you look at the map, and if we replace every zero, every cell with zero to one, and every cell with one to zero, and we keep the don't care unchanged, we find the complement of the function. So we'll end up the complement of the function is the sum of terms 1, 3, 13, 15, plus the do not care terms 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, and 14. Again, if we simplify the map as, as a sum of products, always, 
we simplify when a group once will give me a sum of products if we simplify the map it, we will get we will get uh, the group of eight and the group of eight will give me a prime a prime y a prime because zero will cancel with the one for a so I will get B for the group of eight will be B here and one because everything will cancel on the vertical side so I have only B this is a group of eight will give me B again because the zero will cancel with the one for the A so I will have B zero one 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 so I will have B and here will everything will cancel so this is one one and B, I will get B. The group of four, the zero will cancel with the one, the B. So I have A prime, and the zero will cancel with the one for the C, I have D. So I have A prime D, A prime and D, or A prime D. So this is the minimized function. So I would say F prime will be B, or A prime D. Very interesting. Now, Now the interesting thing here, rather than generating a new map by changing zeros to ones and ones to zeros, we can go to the previous map and we can group for zeros. If we group for zeros, we ignore the ones because we are working on F apply. And I group for zeros and I can utilize as many as many uh, don't care conditions as I wish. As a group of zeros, again I will take this set, which is a set of eight cells, as a group of zero, and I have those two zero, I have to cover them, and I get this set as a group of four. And this is precisely what we did. So we don't have to draw a new map. Okay? We can simplify the four zeros, we can group the zeros and to get f prime as a sum of products without simplifying, without repeating the map again. Now this is, will be very clear for the canonical form because I will keep one map as a shortcut. The canonical and standard forms from K-map, this is extremely interesting and it's really a thorough understanding. As for the minimized Boolean function derived from K-map will express a sum of products, as we have seen it, either with F and F prime. But all the canonical sum of products or sum of n terms and and the is the sum of all the corresponding one cells. The canonical product of sums, the product of max terms, is the product of all the corresponding zero cells. The minimum sum of products form is obtained by grouping the one cells, as seen in the previous slides. The minimum product of sums form is obtained by grouping the zero cells, since zeros of f are ones for f of f prime. The complement of the minimum sum of products for f is then the minimum product of sums for f. What we mean by this, we will understand this in example. So we have a simple map given to us with our don't care conditions. We don't want to get confused with the details. And I have ones and zeros in every cell. So how can I find f as a sum of products? This is what the map usually, if we group them once, we'll get the sum of products. So I have ones here. Before we do that, let's do the canonical form. The canonical form, I list all the cell. I know the cell number. You remember, this is zero. One, two, three. So I have one at zero, and I have one at three. So the min term zero and min term three. Or I can list them as zero, 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 or A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar and 3, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, or A bar, B bar, C, D. You say bar or prime. 
which is a complement sign. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, then the same thing, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8, we jump a colon, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 is 1, so the last midterm is 1, this midterm 15. So we can find the canonical form for f is the sum of midterm 0, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 15, because the cells, these cells, have ones. So the function will be the sum, and this is the canonical form of f from the map. Now the canonical f uh, as, as a product of sums, or as a product of max terms, we will look at the cells when the value of that cell is zero. So we'll combine the cells when they are zeros. Okay, so when they are zeros, we will find the following. We will find that is the product of max terms 1, 2, 5, 9, 10, 13, and 14. And this is the cycle of CC. 1 is 0, 1, and 2, this is cell 2. Okay, this is cell 3, 4, this is cell 3 is 1. This is we need 4, then we need this cell, this is 9, then we have 10, then we have 12, and we have 13. So we have 13 and we have 14, 13 and 14, 13, 12, 13, 14, and definitely 15 is 1. So by having that, so we list all the max term when the function value is 0. Now for f prime, the canonical form will be the opposite. The zeros will be represent min terms for f prime if we don't have another map, the same map, because the zeros, they are really ones, and the ones are zeros for the f prime. So, so what the f prime, the canonical form of f prime, will be the sum of min terms 1, 2, 5, 9, 10, 13, 14, and the prime deck of the max terms 0, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 15. This is the canonical form of f prime. As we are imagining, we are having really a new map. Okay with changing the zeros to ones and the ones to zeros. Now, we group the ones to find the minimal expression of f as sum of a product, and this is what we use the math for all the time. As sum of a product, I will group ones. So the first set of four here will give me c prime, d prime. Another set of four will give me c, d, and I have set of two ones here, two ones here, and this is will give me a prime b. The one will cancel with a zero for b and c. I will have a prime b, a prime b c, and this is what we see. We see that I have c prime d prime c d a prime b c. So this is the minimal expression for f as a sum of product, as a sum of product. Now we group the zeros to have the minimal f as a product of sum. Now this is, we need really to pay attention how we group the zeros and how we find the product of sums. This is how we do it. We come here, we group this set of zeros. If we understand one group, we understand them all. So this set of zeros, and we need the sum term. The sum term for this, I have everything will be cancelled here. And I will have the sum term will be C, the C is 0, and the D is, the D is 1. So it will be C or D prime, will be the complement of those values. Why so? 
because in reality this is it is c prime d prime or it is c or d prime because we are looking for a sum term and the sum term is the complement of the product and the product in reality is c prime d so it will be c or d prime so as a shortcut we don't think about the product term at all just we change the values. We said everything will be cancelled. Everything will be cancelled from the horizontal side. And from the vertical side, I have C or D prime. So this is the first product, the first sum term. First sum term is C or D prime. C or D prime. Okay. Let's look at the next one. The next one is those two zeros. When you group this is a set of two, I have the zero will cancel with the one for the B. So I have A. But in reality, will be the complement of that, so I'll take A prime. And horizontally, vertically, I'm sorry, vertically, we'll have C, D prime. C, D prime, or C prime, or D. C prime, so I will have A prime, or C prime, or D. A prime, C prime or D. Now this zero with this zero, they are logically adjacent. We have the one will cancel with the zero for the A, so I have B, B, or C prime or D. So what I will have, B or C prime or D. Why C prime? Because it is one, so we will invert it to C prime, and the D is zero, it will become D. Okay, from D prime will become D. So those are, will be the sum terms for the, for the function, and we find it that F will be represented as a product of some C or D prime, A prime or C prime or D, B or C prime or D. Now, for the map, if we group the zeros, we'll find the minimum expression for f prime as SOP, as a sum of product, and we'll end up with C prime D, A C D prime, B prime C D prime. So we do the opposite. And we group the ones to find the product of sum, and we'll come C or D, C prime or D, A or B prime or C prime. Reality looks very complicated. It's very, very easy. Without using Boolean algebra, without using uh, De Morgan theorem, for instance, we can find all the values from the map in canonical and standard forms for both f and f prime. This is very important uh, concept that we need to remember. Two-level implementations. Hardware implementations for any Boolean or switching function is of great interest due to the their preference in Siemens ASIC technology, application specific integrated circuit. So always actually the manufacturer prefer to have a logical system based on identical gates like all NAND gate or all node gate, the silicon fabrication, the fabrication stage and generating uh, the integrated circuit will be much easier than have variety of gates uh, exist on this uh, board. This is on the same silicon. This may be not true when we deal with programmable logic devices, but to design a gate level, a gate integrated circuit, a gate level integrated circuit, that is very, very true. Digital systems with better characteristics, such as smaller size and less delay, can be fabricated with all NAND or all node, and also known as NAND NAND or node node realizations. This is why we say the NAND and both both of them universal gates. It means we can implement every switching function with all NAND and every switching function with all node if we wish to. Now we have eight those implementation. How can we get those implementation? How we realize that based on a switching function? This is simple switching function manipulation can yield to those results. 
For instance, if we go, actually this is came from the previous table. If you remember f, we ended up with the minimized f is c prime d prime c d or a prime b c. This is the same function. C prime D prime C D or A prime B C. Now this is the given F. This is the given F. C prime D prime or C D or A prime B C. Now what's the implementation for this given F? This is an AND gate. This is an AND gate. This is an AND gate. And these three product term taken to one OR gate. So it will be a two-level implementation and it will be AND OR. So AND OR implementation. Now, we know that f is f double prime because the complement of complement will be the variable itself. Complement of complement of the variable of the complement will be an algebra. So f will be f double prime, which is c prime d prime or c d or a prime b c double prime. Now, we will use one prime, we'll take it down, so we'll use the Morgan, those plus sign will be will be multiplication sign or and and those will be complemented so we'll get c prime d prime and c d prime and a prime b c all prime all prime so this is nand gate this is nand gate this is nand gate all three nand gates outputs taken to one free input nand gate to give me f and this is nand nand implementation so this is a very famous and or and all NAND implementation that we did simply with using the modic theorem. Now, the second stage, if we look at F, if we look at F as A, B, C, D, we can generate, we can generate this function, which is C or D, C prime or D prime, A or B prime or C prime, and all apply. By using the Morgan theorem at the terms, the internal terms, this is came from this function. So I have this function here, this function here. I will keep the final complement, which is basically it's it's a it's an AND gate. But I will use this complement. So C prime will become C or D. C prime D prime D Morgan. C D will become C prime or D prime. It will become A or B prime or C prime, and this will see the function by using the Morgan. And this is and this is called or and because this is or gate, this is or gate, this is or gate, and three outputs of an or gate taken to one three and gate. If I use the Morgan further, I take this complement further. What you get? You get C D prime, C prime or D prime. C prime or D prime prime or A or B prime or C prime. So this is will be an or or implementation, not or implementation. So that by this we implemented or NAND and not or implementation, as you can see here from the hardware in front of you. So those are all of them. So not or implementation. Now, if I take f prime, if I go to the previous slide that we generated f prime right here, generated f prime, c prime d, a c, d prime, b prime, c, d prime by grouping the zeros from the k-map. So if I have f prime, I will apply I will apply get f because I don't need f prime. I need to implement f. So I will complement all these terms, and by complementing these terms, what we will get get an and not implementation. This is and. This is and. This is and. Taken to one three input not gate. Now, if you take the complement down using the Morgan, f will become c prime d prime prime a c d prime prime. D prime C, D prime prime, and this is will be an AND and implementation. So I realize the function again as AND NOR or as an AND AND implementation. And here we go. We have a correct implementation 
with two more uh, techniques. And the final technique, we will take the FABCD, which is from as a product, as a product of sum, which is C or D prime, A prime or C prime or D, B or C prime or D. This is, could be taken from the map, or it could be derived from the previous function. Okay, see by taking, by applying the complement here, C prime, this will be become become C prime D, if we use D Morgan, if we wish D Morgan, or then we apply the complicant again, so it'll end up with C or D prime and A prime or C prime or D or B C prime D, right? Or we can get it from the previous slide that we did, we derived the function as a, as a product of sum, which is a direct implementation for or and. So this is an OR gate, this is an OR gate, this is an OR gate, and the three OR gate taken to one three AND gate to implement the function. Now, we take a couple of complements on this function, because to apply the Morgan, we take one complement down, and this OR gate will become an OR gate, an OR gate, and an OR gate, and this will give me an OR node implementation. So by doing that, we will get another two realization, and the total is eight different realizations for one function, one switching function f. So here we get OR and, which is equivalent to NOR NOR. So all these realizations are equivalent. So in hardware means if we don't have enough gates from NAND gate, we can apply the function that way. And as I told you, this is will be clearly useful for integrated circuit design. Especially there's something called really gate uh, gate matrices that you can purchase and you can program to build any function with identical gates, all NAND or all NOR gates specifically as purposes. The two-level implementation is very useful and clearly was successful to implement as one switching function with eight different realizations and or NAND NAND or NAND NOR OR and NOR NAND and OR and NOR NOR and I thank you so much. Something I did not mention that two-level implementation is very useful because it has less delay or almost no delay and it has very successful outcome. So it's very desirable. I would like to thank you so much. Please subscribe. I will see you soon. Sincerely, Dr. Hassan.